Hi, Kia ora, listeners. Let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the podcast. Let's have a look at the Akibasho Day 3, 4 and 5. Story of this Akibasho is that it's really known as the Wacky Aki. Strange things occurring, strange things happening in the September tournament for some reason. Uh, anyway, this one's no different. The Ozeki for failing to deliver, mostly against Tokto Fuji. Day 2 action saw Tobizaru defeat the Shin Ozeki Hoshoryu. Hakuto Fuji withstood a barrage of attacks to beat uh, Ozeki Kirishima, but Ozeki Takashikeisho showed some fight to beat Meisei. I think a match of the day, sorry, I mean day three, the day match of the day goes to Hakuto Fuji beating Kirishima. Kirishima tried everything, and to me, he looked a little bit impatient, and that seems to be the story of Kirishima's tournament so far, a little bit rushed. And Hakuto Fuji, he just seems to have this super stable low base at the moment and waited to get into a better position to take advantage. I, I just think that's Hakuto Fuji's new secret. It really shouldn't be a secret in sumo. It's just the lower base, the lower part of the body is everything to do with your power and balance in this wrestling sport. And Hakuto Fuji just seems to be employing it well and showing that July was pretty much no fluke so far. Bit of an unusual loss for Kirishima, who tends to have... You know, I think he's got very good balance, and as a new Ozeki, he's had this aura about him, but he seems to have lost a bit of patience. Anyway, Hoshoryu seems to be having some uh, difficulty as well, getting settled, uh, settled as an Shin Ozeki in his first promotion tournament. Tobizaru, on day three, he wanted it badly, and he showed it at the touch eye. Uh, Tobizaru went forward hard, and Hoshoryu got his feet stuck a bit, and really cost him dearly. His right foot didn't really move and the flying monkey took his hand and promenaded him out of the ring. Takakesho, he seems to be warming up to this tournament and it's clear that his uh, knees have recovered. Uh, day three, he was against Meisei and he waited at the touchy eye for him. Very unusual for Takakesho to sit at the touchy eye and wait for someone to come to him. Anyway, it pretty much did the trick because I'm not sure why, but may say he had a go at out-thrusting the power thrust of Takakesho, who pretty much just grabbed him by the back of the neck and unceremoniously dumped him to the floor with a Hatakikomi slapdown. Daesho, he just got out-thrusted by Arby. Arby seems to be bringing a funny sort of sumo at the moment. Uh, he really seemed to be a bit more uh, intent on it. Anyway, he just brought more power, a better contact, and it uh, deeply upsets Daesho, given it's that's his stock-in-trade move. Uh, from there, where are we at? So another one of my picks for the Basho, Asanayama. Now, I had him as, you know, an outside dark horse for this Basho, but he lost to Nishkigi. And it was pretty much just really good sumo by Nishkigi. Nishkigi got a grip at the touchy eye and Asanayama just didn't. And every time Asanayama seemed determined to get that grip, it seemed that, Asani, uh, that uh, Nishkigi was just a bit more determined to break any grip than Asanayama had. He tried a few things and then when he tried to move and change his balance, Nishkigi... You know, he's fairly experienced. He felt it and he took his opportunity and out goes Asanayama. In better news for one of my favourite wrestlers on day three, and I do like the underdog. Uh, it's a story of Australia. If you're from Canada or uh, one of the other countries listening to me, uh, Midori Fuji, you know, we like a smaller guy. We like an underdog in Australia and we like to see them win. So he got his first win of the Basho against Koto Echo. He's been not really going so well at the moment. But simply put, Midori Fuji returned to his old self with some pretty good balance, a bit of patience and a bit of defence. And if you, if you can search on YouTube, you'll see some of his early bouts from 2016, 2017, and very much it showed Midori Fuji was very good at defending against arm grips, holding positions against bigger opponents to stop them lifting him, keeping his base, and being very patient about what he did and taking an opportunity when it came. And he pretty much did this with a classic defend, got an underarm grip, uh, got his hand up under the armpit and uh, went for a throw against Koto Eko. And this time, a Katasukashi underarm throw did it for him. So, look, that's good to see from Midori Fuji. I think he just needs to return to what he's used to doing. 
Bit of an unusual Kimarate today with Kin Bozan, who I'm very impressed with in this basho, is pretty poor in the last couple. But this one, he seems to have found a bit more effort, a bit more intent. And he defeated the round belly man of Hiradumi by a uh, Sukadage neck wrap throw. And now Kinbozan grabbed him by the back of the neck and threw him around and down. Well, you wouldn't get away with that in any sort of football, attacking the neck, but in sumo, it is the dumb thing. Quite an interesting Kimarate. I haven't seen that one before. Kind of, uh, if we go back to, I think, July or May, an Izuri neck throw was another one I saw. Anyway, on to day four. Day four saw Arby beat Kirishima. Kirishima went two and two. Look, it was a quick match. Uh, Kirishima, he just got bombarded and he got a bit impatient again. And that, that appears to be the story of Kirishima's uh, tournament so far. Uh, Sukiyatoshi, and uh, out he goes. Takash- Takakesho beats Asanayama. Don't know why, but Asana Yama seemed to take, decided to take some supari action to the super thruster Takakesho, and Takakesho just had too much bulk, and he, Asana Yama just overcommitted, and uh, he went down as well. Shodai beat Hashoryu. Hashoryu was under pressure. He put uh, Shodai under pressure, and Shodai was kind of right up against the bales, and he pulled what I could only call a Terunofuji sort of side tilt move to take a shot of you down. It's a bit of an unusual sort of hip movement, uh, but it worked. And Shodai seems to be bringing a little bit of uh, unusual sumo to this one. Good on him. Uh, Daesho finally got a win up against Hokuto Fuji. Big thrusting attack. Hokuto Fuji could not stop it. And I just thought it was a bit silly that Hokuto Fuji decided to play Daesho's game. And I don't know that that's a tactic to beat Daisho. He is the super thruster. He, the, the sort of power he brings if you play his game is uh, really difficult to beat. There are many other ways to beat Daisho, and that's not it. Wakamoto Haru, he, bet, uh, he beat Meisei, a good strike at Tachio, which opened Meisei up. He tried to defend, and he just stepped out under pressure. Kotonowaka, he took uh, Takanosho out. Just a big lift and out he went. Kotonowaka's got the uh, got the size and the bulk to lift someone out. Nishikigi, he beat uh, Tobizaru. Tobizaru tried a front on, and I think it was just a poor choice for him. Uh, unfortunately, day four, Midori Fuji, he went out to uh, Endo. Look, I, I give some props to Midori Fuji in this fight. He looked better. He looked more stable, like in day three. Uh, he had a bit more patience, but in the end, it's just it's a bit of an unlucky hit to the belly that uh, Endo got to him, and it just propelled Midori Fuji out. A uh, little bit unlucky there. Let's move on to day five. Uh, Midori Fuji versus Minta Kayumi. Look, and again, I've seen this again and again in this tournament. People are playing the game of their opponents and putting basically giving them all the advantage. And Midori Fuji did this with Mitakuyumi. Mitakuyumi is sitting on three and one. Uh, and, you know, Midori Fuji, he got that really good classic defensive grip on the arms. But he at some point he broke contact and it just gave Mitakuyumi an opportunity to reset himself and go for the big push. Uh, Gonayama, he beat Onosho. Good charge at the Tachi Eye. Two big men. Uh, first loss for Onosho, who was sitting on 4 0. Gonayama moves to 4 1. Uh, Onosho moves to 4 1 as well. Shodai beats Ura. And again, Ura fell for Shodai's, you know, strength. Uh, a little bit silly. Uh, got him against the bales, and Shodai got an arm where he shouldn't have. And basically, Sukiyatoshi. Out he goes. Uh, Meisei beats Hokuto Fuji. Look, this was really good footwork by Meisei to let uh, Hokuto Fuji get too far ahead of himself. And I thought it was a little bit of lack of patience on Hokuto Fuji. You know, a little bit of pressure and he went down Hitaki Komi. A little bit of a slap down. Uh, Takanosho versus Daisho. So Takanosho is on one and three. Daisho on two and two. Daisho just... 
you know, those balance issues persist with him. Uh, he went uh, out oshidashi, but, you know, it was really a matter of impatience. He got just a bit too high on his on the toes of his, on the balls of his feet, and uh, that put him out of balance, and Tokonosho was good enough to see that balance loss and take him out. Okay, moving on, let's have a look. Uh, Kotonawaka versus Tobizaru. Uh, where are we? Tobizaru, he was strong enough to withstand the first hit. And, uh, Kotonawaka, he just didn't get the grip. Uh, and yeah, he, basically he was pulled out. Look, it's a funny one. They called this a Hitaki Komi, but uh, again, he was pulled out and taken on a promenade. I didn't think it was a Hitaki Komi. A bit unusual, but uh, there you go. Kirishima, look, uh, I'll give Kirishima versus Asanayama, both two and two. Uh, the Ozeki and the former Ozeki, I'll call this one the fight of the day and the move of the day. Really good fight if you get a chance to catch up on a replay for day five. This is the one you want to watch. Look, it could have gone either way. Uh, they, were, they were trying very hard against each other. Both lost balance, regained balance, good defense, good pushing, a lot of grip movement. Uh, but in the end, it was very unusual. Asanayama just got his feet in a bit of funny sort of very narrow stance. And Kirishima, well, you know, king of the leg trips, he got his leg around Asanayama and took him down on a leg trip. Uh, Sotogake, they called this one. Uh, basically a leg trip push down. So Sotogake, that's a good one to learn. Uh, and I, like I said, uh, that is the fight of the day for me. Tamawashi and Hoshoryu. Tamawashi on zero and four. Uh, look, Tamawashi might have some sort of injury. Look, he's not known for going Kyujo, but he, anyone else probably would. Hoshoryu got this one, but I'll tell you what, uh, this was more about Hoshoryu avoiding a loss rather than winning. He won it, but I'll tell you what, he had to work hard for it. Uh, it was messy, it was scrappy. Last fight of the night, Takakesho versus Arby, both on three and one. Arby's having a good tournament so far, but you wouldn't know it. Uh, this was a fairly easy win for Takakesho, just a push out for him. Uh, other news, Wakamoto Haru, he got back to a little bit of form, got the grip, lost it, got it deeper, then lost it, but he had the better strength against Nishikigi, and Nishikigi went out Yorikiri. So that's the end of day five. Look, it's, it's shaping up to be a little bit unusual. Uh, Kirishima's disappointed a little bit. I'm sure he's a bit disappointed in his uh, lack of patience. Certainly Daesho... Uh, so he goes two and three at the moment. He'd be very disappointed with that. Hokuto Fuji. Well, he's taken a few of the Ozekis, went out, obviously, to uh, lost to Meisei today, which is a bit disappointing for him, and uh, lost yesterday as well. So, you know, he'd be looking to uh, regather himself and get himself back to uh, maybe four and two tomorrow. Uh Asanayama, he'd probably be a little bit disappointed, but, you know, it was a hard match. He took him a long time to get up off the dojo today after that loss. Three and two, he's, sorry, two and three is Asanayama, Kirishima three and two. Uh, I think he was quite disappointed with that. So where do we go from here? Look, uh, Arby's having a good tournament. Hoshoryu, I think he'll still be quite the uh, contender for the end of this tournament. Kirishima, if he can get his patience and balance back. He's still a contender. Uh, probably a couple of surprises for me. I think that Takakesho is showing a little bit of intent, uh, and he certainly, uh, if he can keep that up and stay not injured, that would be good for him. Kinbozan has really impressed me this tournament. A very good intent uh, for him. Uh, and... Uh, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much where they fall at the moment. Look, I think by the end of the weekend, maybe Monday, we'll have a better idea who's of who's still travelling well. Uh, we're only at day five of 15, so 10 more matches to go. So there's probably a few injuries and things like that. But uh, certainly it's been an unusual tournament. A little bit of nervousness, perhaps early for a few of the Elzeki. A little bit of confidence Hak Tofuji has brought into this tournament. And certainly... Uh, 
Tucker Kosho with his new little head wiggle he's got at the touchy eye. That's uh, quite interesting, but he's certainly bringing some intent with him as well. So I hope you're enjoying the, the sumo. It's interesting uh, that uh, they're now restreaming, NHK are restreaming using the uh, one of the, what is it, sumo primetime on YouTube. On the weekdays, they're restreaming with English uh, commentary on YouTube, so you should be able to catch it there. On the weekends, you may have to uh, go back to your normal methods to get uh, a stream for the sumo, but uh, Monday to Friday, it appears that NHK have finally recognised that uh, international viewers, such as Australia, US, Canada, even plenty of places in Europe, are interested in watching sumo, so... I hope you can catch it on uh, YouTube if you haven't got uh, an NHK subscription and the VPN. Uh, and some English commentary really helps you to understand uh, what's going on in the uh, dojo. Anyway, uh, don't forget to subscribe, leave me a comment at our uh, Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And hopefully I'll come back to you probably after Sunday. I'll be a bit busy until Sunday, so... Maybe Sunday I might uh, upload another episode and we'll talk about where we're at at that point leading into the last week. Anyway, people, hakioi, let's learn sumo.